Rajimal Hatraji. In your opinion, what are the big or uh, great risk or hurdles Hindu dharma faces today? So, Ami, this is, uh, I'm glad you asked this because uh, this has been so important. Uh, you know, if we don't face uh, problems and issues and we believe everything is fine, then we are not being responsible. So, in the beginning of my journey, when I left my whole business, corporate life, professional life more than 25 years ago, uh, I thought that the major challenge will be Westerners who are attacking us uh, in the academy. And I started having a lot of fights with them and I'm, I'm still doing that. And uh, that is true. There is a lot of colonized, uh, you know, mindset, colonized teachings which have come from the British colonial past. And then I discovered that a lot of Indians are also colonized, a lot of leftist people are colonized. So my fight went to India also now, facing Indian people uh, or who are also of the same opinions against our dharma. And this has become very fashionable yeah. for people who think they are intellectuals yeah. to do that way. Now I've come across the third category. The third category are people who are practicing Hindus. So you can't say that this guy is a Christian or a Muslim. You can't say he's a Marxist, leftist, atheist because they're practicing Hindus. I have really discovered the insufficient education of our own Hindus and weakness, not courage to stand up and speak. But then there are so many activists who are always tweeting and having manthans and gatherings and so on. They are very openly proud and, and you know, uh, assertive Hindus. But they are not well informed. They have not done enough tapasya. They have not done the real Purva Paksha. They are just copy pasting each other. Yeah. It's like an echo chamber, a hall of mirrors mirroring each other. And they stick and so it's very surf, superficial knowledge. And it goes into, goes into the latest scandal. So go after this scandal, sensation, something sensational happening. Uh, going into the politics of uh, mixing politics with real true dharma. So I think we have succeeded in one sense in the past 25 years from where it, things were of uh, becoming aware of outsiders threatening us. The outsider breaking India forces. Uh, so we are very concerned about it. A lot of people will say, okay, this guy is a fake uh, a missionary, is really out to convert people and uh, try out to disrupt us. And this guy is more a jihadi and this one is a Marxist and he's against our tradition. There are people, so now we have a large army of vigilant intellectual kshatriyas doing that. I think the frontier now, the next frontier is internal. We have to internally raise the standard of our own leaders who are representing us to make sure they are properly trained and properly educated and make sure that they are doing the right level of tapasya and not just ripping off from each other because you know somebody works very hard write a book on something and most many so many people who haven't done that tapasya won't even quote won't even reference won't even cite that out of this this is our tradition is to respect your sources when uh, when the when the when a, a scholar was writing on something he would quote who is quoting he has to quote that so that tradition is being lost and therefore quick copy paste has substituted hard work and rigor. Quick copy paste, if I don't have to work so hard, I can do quick copy paste, come up with a one liner slogan and keep uh, uh, putting out tweets. I will become very famous, a lot of people will follow me, then I will get invited, then I will get some award. Uh, so this is, the, this is the calamity we are facing. Superficial knowledge, superficial leadership without the foundation uh, is not going to take us. So this is one big uh, problem I see facing Hindu dharma. Second problem I see is uh, lack of uh, uh, organization, uh, you know, lack of, lack of cohesiveness. Uh, you know, you need good followers in order to encourage good leaders. If everybody wants to be a leader, you know, you create a, create a system and you uh, train people rather than helping you following and completing the work, they'll all go off on their own trying to compete with the same thing. So what we have is a lot of scattered small, small uh, initiatives, a lot of little, little groups here and there, uh, but not a cohesive uh, view uh, that make, brings us all together. So I think this lack of cohesiveness is, a, is another uh, issue I face. Third thing I face is quick results people want. Yeah. Jugad. What in the north is called Jugad. Yeah, I, I improvise, 
I quickly fix the problem, I cover up, I make it look like I've solved your problem, actually nothing has changed. So if you compare against someone like China, where it is long term thinking, long term infrastructure being built, long term education, long term sports, long term political, military, economic, long term thinking. You know, we've done, we, we have a tendency to be very happy with quick results. And, uh, but our civilization was built on long term thinking. Yeah. So these are some of the issues I feel are very dangerous for us today. And I don't feel that we are that safe. I feel that the next generation have huge expectations and they feel that they have suddenly become Americanized because they got smartphones and they got BMW cars and you know they have got all the fancy gadgets and they are flying around the world and they have learnt all the Americanisms in their tweets and in their language. But I think that work ethic is not there. This is, I don't know how you feel about, this is my reading of today's situation. You are correct, I am agreeing with you. But you said the present day problem is uh, that uh, from, from our own side, that is those who are saying I am Hindu or I am Indian. But at the same time, the present day media, especially in India and uh, politicians, they are working for jihadis, knowingly or unknowingly. They are working for those who are converting, again knowingly or unknowingly. So working in that pattern is considered somewhat uh, uh, generous or uh, somewhat uh, broad-minded, even now in India. Yes, yes. I am, I am, I am speaking from the Indian yes. context. No, this is you are absolutely right. So that still that is remaining still now. Yes. What is your opinion about that? How we can, in your opinion, how we can change that? How no, we can break that? Yeah. No. I mean that was the whole project of this whole breaking India, exposing that and Hindu phobia. Uh, now to solve that problem, we need what I have called a home team, our yeah. team yeah. of intellectual kshatriyas. Now I am having difficulty getting a good team of intellectual kshatriyas. They are all willing to become in, uh, become activists, but there is a difference between an activist and a scholar. Yeah. Scholar course. has to work hard. I agree. Uh, agree. Activists can, you can just give him one liners and give him a flag and slogan and he will go with posters and he will shout and scream. But he is not deeply informed and he, he will fall apart if there is a qu question answering with some depth. And so in this age of learning and knowledge and uh, you know information age, uh, our people ha need to have much deeper understanding of the opposing side. Yeah. Much deeper than we, we are able to. So my feeling is that in order to fight all these forces, that these what breaking India forces and Hindu phobic forces, we need a, a team, a home team of solid intellectual kshatriyas with a, a kind of a desire to read a lot, study a lot, understand a lot, debate uh, and be well informed. So we have people with a lot of opinions and emotions but not necessarily well informed. And I find this uh, being originally from Delhi, you know, uh, I go to Delhi four times a year and I travel all over India. I find that Delhi culture is like, you know, very superficial. Delhi is not very much uh, connected with the Bharat. Even the new government, not necessarily deeply connected with Bharat. And knowledge, particularly knowledge of the rest of the world, in the Ministry of Culture, in the Ministry of Education, in the HRD, in, in the external affairs, where you would think that there would be a lot of think tanks talking about this, I don't find people. So, the, you know, previously people said, okay, we'll change the government, everything will be solved. So, we've changed the government, the government is a new government, better, much better than the previous, certainly. But still, a lot of these issues require a deeper level of leadership and understanding about our civilization. That's I, I feel lacking today. And you spoke about Delhi. It is not the case of Delhi alone. As you know, you are aware of that. Uh, India is going away from Bharat. Yes. That is the present day problem. And uh, to address that, uh, I think I am not fully I am not fully aware about it. But new education policy mm. has been drafted by the government, the present day central government. So if that new education policy is uh, implemented, I am hopeful of that. Uh, a big change will happen mm. because in it uh, regional languages and uh, Sanskrit language 
all this has given proper attention. So, if that is implemented, mm. uh, you know, change will come. I think. I yes. Know. So, one is uh, to teach a regional language. But beyond that, you need to have good content in that language. Yeah, yeah. So, for instance, a lot of people tell me, why aren't you doing your books in Hindi? So, I will, I will want my readers to know this. Uh, many of my books have been translated into Hindi. Breaking India has been translated into Hindi. Be being Different has been translated into Hindi. Uh, some of them have been translated into Kannada. Some are translated into Tamil. The sales, the, re the, the readership is not even 10 percent of what it is in English. Uh, when you go to an airport shop, most of the books are in English. Yeah. Not because they don't like regional languages, they want to make money. If, if there is enough demand for regional languages, they will put regional languages. Uh, the publishers, the, all the publishers who I have approached for my books, all the regional language publishers, uh, their print run is very small because their readership is very small. Yeah. Even though the price of the Hindi book is much lower than the price of the English book, but very few people reading it. So, now on the other hand, the Hindi readership is very much bigger than English for newspapers. Newspaper, newspapers. Uh, the local languages do better, TV, the local languages do better. But when it comes to a book, particularly a non fiction book, particularly a large serious book, the Hindi mind is not reading. This is very strange. That's true. You know, I, I have a, 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 let us say there is a book which has sold in so many tens of thousands of copies in English. Uh, somebody from Kannada wants to launch a book, uh, that book in Kannada or somebody in Tamil Nadu or somebody in Hindi. After doing so much work, spending so much money on translations and all that, their print run is uh, 2000 copies, 1000 copies. It is an insult. It's, so, you know when you ask uh, why aren't you doing it in Hindi, uh, my question is why aren't you Hindi readers reading. Uh, now, I have a uh, YouTube channel. So, we started dubbing my, the, the best uh, lectures, we started doing Hindi dubbing. We hired a professional firm uh, that, uh, 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 you know, the same topic, they, they transcribe the Hindi, the English, uh, you know, video, then they translate it into Hindi, then they dub it, they voice it and they, then so you can watch the Hindi version. But the number of views for the Hindi version is like one tenth of oh. what it is for the English version. But they keep putting comments saying, aap Hindi mein bolo, aap Hindi mein bolo, aray bhai, hum, jahan Hindi mein bol rahe, aap sun rahe. Why, why, not? why is it that uh, the, the, uh, the Hindi speakers while demanding are not uh, fulfilling their side of the bargain. They have to be, now I do not know how it is in Kerala, whether the books written uh, in the local language are doing as well as English books. I do not know. In Kerala, it is quite good. Uh, will the will the books in uh, Malayalam uh, be definitely, definitely? They are read. Of course, there is no doubt in that. So, is there a uh, issue of supply of content? Like you need mathematics written, physics written, computer science written. You need you need all the latest uh, uh, non-fiction books, which are the best sellers in the world, to be translated into that language, so that people are informed. If I, one of the problems of the of promoting regional languages has been availability of serious content. So, person, for instance, even law, the case law, you know, all over India there are so many cases being fought all the time. The proceedings of each case are very important for a lawyer to know. So, he can he can use precedence. He can say such and such court made this decision yeah. and he can cite that as precedence. So, those books are called case law. All the case law is in English. So, if I am a lawyer in Hindi, I am not going to get access to all the Supreme Court proceedings in, uh, in Hindi and the High Court proceedings and various court proceedings. I do not have access to it. So, I, 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 am a, I, am a, uh, I have an inferiority position compared to the English speaking lawyer because he is better informed. Yeah. He, can, he can get those books, he can search them online, he, can, uh, he is more skilled. So, I have to be like a second tier uh, lawyer yeah. uh, whereas the English speaking lawyer is first tier lawyer. So, same thing with computer science, uh, you know the programming languages are, are, are in English. The same thing with the job market, uh, you can promote in English, uh, you can promote regional languages, but if you want them to be on par with English, then you have to learn from Japan and China, where their native language is the mother tongue and English is the second language. Yeah. So, all the textbooks, all the medium of instruction is in their na native language. 
when they're teaching geography, when they're teaching history, when they're teaching science, chemistry, physics, they're teaching in, the, in Mandarin in China. They're teaching in Japanese in Japan. And English is taught as a language that you must know for the global. Global purpose. Global. So the project uh, is more than just uh, teaching the language. Uh, who is, I mean, I have, I have talked to the HRD people. There is not even this awareness that you have thousands of books to be translated. Now, of course, a positive way to look at it is that this will create jobs for people in the local language. It, it's a way to create jobs. Because if you teach a whole, if you train a whole lot of people who know Hindi, for example, and you give thousands of books that need to be translated properly, you create jobs for Hindi writers. Yeah. There, it could be considered as an opportunity, but they have not connected it this way. We are more children of uh, Macaulay. Yeah, <laughs> uh, children of Macaulay, but Macaulay died 200 years ago. But still. <laughs> uh, we are children of Ramina Thapar. And uh, we are children of uh, today's, uh, today's leaders. So grandchildren we can say. <laughs> well, no, I think, I think uh, you know, I'm writing a lot on that history. Yeah. And I'm going to write a book on uh, the past 500 years, five, since the 1500s when the Portuguese arrived. Yeah. And this era of Europeanization started. I'm writing on that. Uh, the role of Hindu Brahmins as accomplices needs to be understood. Uh, the, the, for, when the first uh, Portuguese arrived, the Jesuits arrived, uh, it's, they got hold of Hindu Brahmins to help them. And the Hindu Brahmins actually taught them a lot of tricks, how to, yeah. how to translate this, mistranslate that, how to convert, how to do this. A lot of the arguments and, uh, uh, on behalf of the missionaries were made by the Hindu Brahmins who were hired. So, and this, this problem continues today also. Our people are very enthusiastic about uh, becoming important on the global stage, world stage. Even if at the cost of uh, being a kind of uh, betraying their own uh, their own tradition, so the Macaulay is one thing, but we have that happening today also. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here and also hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified. To donate, please click this button.